we give all of the things that we've been striving for and trying to reach, the things that we've kept in our control. Lord, the things that we're closed fists about that we think that we've got it, but then we just tend to forget that we have such a good, good Father who loves us, who cares for us and the things that we face. And so today we just open those closed fists to you. We give you the things that we've been trying to do and stressed about and reaching and striving for. And we are just reminded of a God with a powerful name who does amazing things, who doesn't just have love or give love, but a God who is love. Thank you, Jesus, for your name. Thank you, Jesus. You were the word at the beginning, one with Yeah. 
name how many names does he have how much does he give to us how much can we give for him if you're looking for a miracle find that you are the miracle for you've been made complete through God through Jesus Christ you carry him in you now Jesus is our Savior but Jesus is with us always in us always if we need that miracle, we need to look within. We need to put him first, for he is the ultimate hero, healer. He is our father, the love of him. We thank Jesus for all that he does, for the, all that he has given, for all that he will be in our lives. And this song is a wonderful song because it gives grace and glory. When we pr play music in church, we play to praise and we play to glorify Him. And what better way to glorify Him by praising His name, the wonderful name that He has, the wonderful name that He is. For through Him, we have been forgiven by God. He paid that ultimate, ultimate price for us. And He didn't ask for anything other than to believe in him for if we believe in him we find the father so think inside whatever you're going through whatever sickness or heart felt pain that you may have know that you are a miracle and if you step out and just ask for Jesus to be there for you you'll find that he's always been there for you for he is not a God of shame he is not a person that dwells against us. He's always here for us, for you. Embrace him. Love him as he loves us. And be that light that shines forth for him. So I want to go back and I want to play the verse three and then go into the chorus because the words are so powerful. The words are so wonderful. He is our Father.
everybody, and welcome to Story Church. Whether you are joining us online or in person, we are so glad you're here. Welcome to September. We have a lot going on, and we are so excited to share it with you this morning. The first thing is that small groups are kicking off this month. We have a lady small group and a men's small group that we would love for you to be a part of. Life happens in the context of small groups. It's a place where you can share and learn and be seen and known and laugh and cry. It's an awesome place and we don't want you to miss out on those. So go ahead to our website, click on the community tab, then a little drop down menu will pop up and it'll say story groups, small groups. Click that, read over which ones there are there and then sign up. We would love to have you be a part. The next thing is that our birthday is coming. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Story Church's second birthday is happening on Sunday, September 17th, and you don't want to miss it. We're talking snow cones. We're talking mega bounce house. We're talking pastor's pie in the face. We're talking about a whole bunch of fun and above all else, worship and the word. You don't want to miss it. The sermon is going to be about stress. We know all of us have that in our lives, but that's the you asked for it topic that we're going to be covering that Sunday and you don't want to miss it. And then the last thing is if you are a guest visiting us, thank you for even trying. We know it can be awkward to try out something new and we're just so thankful that you would come and spend your time with us this Sunday morning. And so if you have, there's a connection card on the seat beside you or if you're watching online, it'll show up on the screen here. And what that connection card is, is just a way for us to get a little bit of information about you. We're not going to show up to your house. We're not going to do anything crazy. We just want to send you a gift card in the mail and say thank you for visiting us. And then one of us, Pastor Spencer or I, will reach out to you and say, hey, you want to get coffee? What did you think about church? Um, we just want to get to know you and your story. Uh, we find that being able to sit down face to face and meet you, man, that's just a treasure and a joy. So thank you for visiting. We hope you enjoy the service. Woo, 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 woo. All right, lots going on. We're super excited. The other thing that I did want to mention to you guys, like we do every um, either August or September right in there, we do 21 days of prayer. So there is a guide on our website. Actually, there's a whole page in the drop down menu that says 21 days of prayer. And so there's a guide that you can download onto your phone or your computer to look at it digitally. And every day of the 21 days, it has a Bible verse, some kind of devotion, some kind of reading in the Bible, a place to take notes. And so if you want to print that off or use it on your phone, you can. We are just jumping into prayer as we are so excited as fall ramps up and visitors come at the events that we have going on. And then the holidays come and people are visiting, enjoying church, man. We just want to start off with this body of people praying and seeking the Lord for what it is that he has for Story Church and that he has for your lives and your marriages and your families. It's a super exciting, exciting season. All right. Woohoo! So every week we'll be posting on our social media, like the theme of the week. Um, and you'll see posts that kind of look like that awesome, fancy Jesus. Look at that fancy Jesus. He's so fancy. Okay. But other than that, the guide will just be a daily kind of thing that, hey, you never jumped in a devotion go ahead and try um but yeah that's it that's it for what's going on right now so we are in part one everybody say part one woohoo it's september y'all it is september just letting y'all know we are in part one of our series, You Asked For It. So a few Sundays back, we took a poll. You guys had some fun little cards on your, on your chair, and you got to choose the top four topics that you'd like us to cover this month in the You Asked For It series. So the first one that we're going to go over, and these aren't in um, actually any kind of order based on, let's see, like on what was more popular or least popular. We're kind of doing them out of order. But the first one, the one that we're going to be going over this Sunday is communication in marriage. Woo! Who needs to learn a little bit more about communicating, right? Oh my goodness, come on. 
Kimmy said, yeah. <laughs> Whether you are single and this is for some good nugget that you can pull for somebody in your family or some kind of crazy cycle maybe you've been on and arguing, somebody at your job. But also this is a foundational aspect of our marriages. So if it's a future marriage that you're going to be stepping into or praying for or a marriage right now, I hope that something, something speaks to you out of this. Now, once again, like I usually put out the disclaimer every time we do anything related to marriage, I want to let you know, Pastor Spencer and I are not licensed counselors. We are 10 years into our marriage and we don't have everything perfect. We are not marriage experts. In fact, later on when I'm talking about the different points of communication and what we need to get right, I'm going to tell you my weakest area just to be vulnerable and let you know the part that I miss it all the time on. But a lot of these really good nuggets are from an awesome guy called Pastor Jimmy Evans. He has an amazing marriage ministry and is a founder of the XO Conference for Marriage. Has anybody heard of that? They kind of got famous because they do this huge marriage conference and you can like do satellite like your church can hold a satellite version where you can like watch it couples can come in and one of the things that has kind of gone viral with it is that every marriage conference you renew your vows in the room with your spouse where everybody else is renewing their vows with their spouse it's a powerful kind of holy moment of that and so he's got a lot a lot of stuff um if you've never checked out the exo marriage conference go ahead but the first place that we're going to be because when we're talking about communication this is probably the number one bible verse you'll hear this Bible verse, you'll find it in Proverbs chapter 18, verses 21 through 22. You guys have heard it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Sometimes you just hear that part of it, but this is specifically talking about marriage. Look at it as it goes further. And those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife, hey, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So we're specifically talking about marriage in this. Man, you have the power to destroy your wife or your husband with your tongue. Or you have the power to speak life. That's a big, big thing. But it's true. The things that we say, the way we say them, when we say them, all of this matters, right? And it's biblical that it does. Maybe just ask yourself today, are you destroying your spouse with the things you're saying? Ooh, or are you bringing life into them? Now, to start talking about communication and why it's important, we must know the why, right? So here's a little statistic. 86% of couples who divorce say they have poor communication. 86%. That's because this one area, communication, encompasses every single other area. If you're having a financial issue, you're probably talking about it. If one of you is having a spending issue, you're arguing about it. If one of you wants to move out of the country to follow a dream and the other one doesn't, you're communicating it about it. Sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's death, right? How are we communicating? Now, the other thing we have to look at here before we jump into the main points are some areas that we communicate with our spouse in, okay? So some basic reasons why we communicate. The first is basic information, right? One of the first reasons we communicate is like the basics. Honey, I'm home. Did you get to that doctor's appointment? Did you pick up the medicine from CVS, right? It's the basic everyday schedules. It's the part that you could be talking all day about these things and then get to the end of the day and realize, like, even though we were talking, communicating all day, we didn't really connect. 
that's because there's just this basic level, right, where you're just talking about the basics. The next is um, some basic reasons. The next is partnership. These are needs, responsibilities, roles we share. This is the things that we're communicating back and forth. Hey, I need you to do this. Or is this something we could look at later in the week because this is coming up? The next thing that we communicate about is conflict resolution. There's going to be conflict. Not that everything has to be a knockdown, drag out fight, but there are things that you aren't going to agree on, that you're gonna have to talk through, that you're gonna have to compromise about, right? The next one, number four, is connection. Now this form of communication can be verbal or nonverbal. This one you have to watch because technology gets in the way. It's something else is taking priority in my life. Have I actually connected and communicated with you or am I distracted, right? The Bible says if you're holding things higher than God, you're idolizing. So are we connecting more with something like our phone or technology than we are our spouse. So this can be, you know, maybe you're in a relationship and maybe something happened in your wife's family, right? Maybe something heartbreaking is happening. Sometimes you guys have learned the best thing isn't to just try to fix it or to jump on it and, you know, word vomit all this stuff, but it's to just put a hand on a shoulder or give a hug. So this form of communication can be verbal and nonverbal. And then there's intimate communication. That's the level deeper, the deepest you can go. This is expressions of love. This is talking about your spiritual lives. This is about your dreams. This is communication like on a soul level. This is like, where do you see our family in five years, 10 years? Where do you see your walk? with God. What in you right now is changing? What season of life are we in that's like sucking us down? This is intimate forms of communication. This should be happening with your spouse. When was the last time you asked, hey, how's your heart? What's going on? Or what's something bad that happened this week, but what's something that was amazing? Sharing intimately, really, really knowing your spouse. All five of these must be operating for our marriages to have healthy and effective communication. We must realize that when communication fails on any level, every level is affected and can shut off completely. And this is dangerous. But wait, right? All of this. Why is this so important? Why is it such a big deal? Before we jump into, I want to just beg you to listen to this. Because your spouse, current or if single, future spouse, because your spouse is worth it. Your future or your current marriage is worth it. Your family is worth it. Yes, marriage takes work, we've all heard of that, but there is nothing like doing life with a partner. Somebody who can stand beside you and behind you and in front of you when they need to be in front, right? Somebody to take the load or carry the burden. There is an attack on marriages today and in culture, right? We see the family unit breaking down, but your marriage is worth it because on the other side of valleys are mountains and on the other side of mountains are valleys and you need, God designed you to go through life with a partner right from the beginning. So please, please hear me. The reason this is so important is because your marriage is worth it. So five keys to successful communication in marriage. Are y'all ready? Woohoo, woohoo. Okay, the first one. Y'all get excited. Come on. Five keys to successful communication. The first one, the first one, the right tone. All the husbands said amen. No? 
the right tone of voice. Colossians 4, 6 says this, let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to each person. This is the hardest to do with the ones you love. Whoo, seasoned with grace. Oh, man, seasoned with salt. All right, I'm going to show you an example of this. I've been practicing. Don't ask me how much. Okay, I'm going to say something, the same thing in multiple different ways, and it's going to mean something completely different. Ready? Okay, I understand. I'll do it. Understanding, right? That communicates. Okay, I understand. I'll do it. Anger but I said the same exact thing. Okay, I understand, I'll do it. Irritation, right? I just said, okay, I understand, I'll do it. And I meant three completely different things. That's the power of tone. And this, y'all, is my hardest, or my biggest weakness, we'll put it that way. My biggest weakness. Why? Because I let everything else that's going on in my life affect the way I talk. And I find myself responding to my spouse. I did not even mean it like that, y'all. That was not my intention. But the way we say things, our voice inflection, our body language, it communicates a lot more than what we're saying. Tone shows that you care. Uh, I let everything else get in my way with this one, right? And I let my irritation influence how I talk. Kids, work, tiredness, all the things that kind of like block out the way I'm really feeling. And at the end of the day, I'll be like, why was I even, what was such a big deal that I was talking or acting or saying those things, right? Tone, tone is a huge part and is a huge key to successful communication. Ask yourself in your daily life, If you get off work and you come home at the end of the day, is any irritation that you had influencing how you're talking to your spouse? Are you speaking words of life or death? What are you communicating to your spouse? All right, so the first was tone. The second one is enough time. Time influences how we communicate. Ephesians 5 Verses 15 through 16 says this. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. I don't know if you felt this, but literally every mom I've talked to says, like, if she needs prayer for something, it's balance. Like, I'm trying to balance work and being a mom and being a wife and then my walk with God. Like, I'm supposed to be putting him first, but did I actually do that today? Did I pray? Did I open the Bible this week? Time. We never seem to have enough of it, and it influences everything. So in your communication, let's walk with wisdom and make the best of our time. Find a rhythm that works for you and your spouse, I would suggest to you. Maybe that's a Sunday evening family meeting where you talk about your schedule. Are you always fighting because you? when was the last time you actually had a date? Put it on the calendar. Make a time where you can get together with your spouse and talk about things. For some couples, that might look like every year taking a weekend or a week away from their kids and just with their spouse. Shutting off technology, getting away from the house and the to-do list. What are your rhythms that you can say, okay, We're going to build this into our calendar, whether it's weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever it is, where we choose to come together and communicate. Because if you're doing that on the front end before things get bad, 
you've already talked. You already know what's going to change and what needs to shift if something crazy happens, right? Enough time. That's an important part of communication. I'm hoping through this message, you guys get something that's worth, okay, I'm going to write this down and talk with my spouse about maybe implementing this, okay? Weekly meetings, monthly dates, what are you doing regularly to talk, share, laugh, to touch, and to dream, to dream about your future? One of my biggest pet peeves is hearing one of the, you know, reasons for divorce is irreconcilable differences, right? And people say, oh, we just changed. She's a different person. Well, how do you expect to have your vows of till death do us part and to never change? Your spouse is always changing. They're always growing. There's new seasons of life. There's differences, and we're all going to grow and do something new. So you should expect to make the time. Because if you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So if you're saying yes to work, 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 busy, 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 you are saying no to your family, whether you realize it or not. Now, there are seasons where this happens, I understand. You start a new job, you're building a business, you're building whatever it is. I understand there's going to be seasons of that, but communicate that with your spouse. Talk about, hey, for the next six months, a date once a month is probably more realistic than every week, but it's not going to stay that way. So let's make a goal that by February, we're back to our weekly dates or whatever it is. Just communicate. All right. Sound okay? Think you could do it? All right. Here's the next one. You ready? An atmosphere of trust. Another key to successful communication, an atmosphere of trust. Trust is the key ingredient that allows us to open our hearts to each other. Trust is everything. Because you can be trying and trying and trying to communicate with your spouse, but if your spouse doesn't trust you, they're not going to hear anything you say. Are you being harsh with your words? Is your tone always a mess? Have you not given any bit of time? That's going to communicate to your spouse that I, I can't trust you. So even when we do get the opportunity to sit down, what could I say? Look at this in Genesis 2, chapters 24 to 25. It's something we skip over a lot, but it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. They shall become one flesh, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now this really, at the end of it, a lot of people just skim right over it because it's like, oh, they're talking about being naked. That's crazy. But this is like ultimate trust and vulnerability. Ultimate trust and vulnerability. Our culture has watered down nakedness. We unfortunately see it everywhere. Sorry, y'all. The absolute trust it takes to be fully transparent with a person is literally God's design for marriage. Fully vulnerable and trusting of someone. Fully vulnerable and trusting. We have to have an atmosphere of trust if we're going to effectively communicate. This means the actual word for like naked here, it means having no protection, being uncovered and exposed. When is the last time like in your heart were you vulnerable and exposed to your spouse? When were you really, really sharing with them how you're feeling? Are you afraid it's going to go bad? <laughs> Are you afraid they're not going to like like what you share? That's where trust comes in. You have to build that over time. I see you. I know you. I love you. You're struggling with this. Don't be caught in shame because God says you're new. You're a new man. You're a new woman. You're renewing your heart. You're renewing your mind. You're struggling with that? Okay, that's hard. That's scary for me too, but I'm going to stand with you because that's not who you are. On the inside, you are a follower of Christ. You are a new creation. You have a new heart. You've been washed by the blood of God, right? That is fully being able to open up and show your spouse who you are. Number four, for the keys to successful communication, the truth 
but spoken in love. Grace and truth are medicine. I need to hear truth from Spencer, but he needs to do it gracefully or I will cry. <laughs> right? <laughs> the truth in love. No one did this better than Jesus Christ. Just shelling out like, look, I see your sin. I see you're struggling with this, this, and this. Calling it out. But I love you, and I have so much better for you, and I want more for you. You can be better. You can do better. And all of it happens not because you're working, but because of my love. Because through me, you are righteous, right? That is truth and love. That's the, the example Jesus gave us. In Ephesians 4.15, it says it like this. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ, right? The Bible says speaking truth in love is maturity. We're not shying away from things that are hard. That's what this means. It means confronting things. Spencer knows me better than anybody else. He has to be my accounta accountability partner in things. Yeah, that hurts coming from him because I know all about him and his mess ups, right? But do I throw that in his face? No. This is about speaking the truth in love and hearing things that are hard to hear, right? Have you, you don't have to tell me what, but raise your hand if you ever had your spouse point out something that was like, oh, I get that. Uh huh. Yeah, I do that. I, I get it. I do that, right? That's a whole different part of like having of time and communication is when is the time to give truth and love, right? <laughs> Not right when they first wake up in the morning and they're like all groggy or in the middle of a heated argument where you're like, well, let me tell you what you need to change because the Bible says this. <laughs> No, that's another time thing, too. You got to figure out when to deliver that. But truth, grace, and love, that's an amazing, amazing mixture. Let's look at Jesus. He does this, John 1, 14. This is the very beginning, right? When John is like, it's like the most beautiful piece of poetry ever, the beginning of John. John 1, 14, he says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. That's just saying, man, Jesus is here. He's real. Like literally the Old Testament, everything we've been passing down for years and years and years and years, it's happening. The time has come. The word has become flesh, and he's living with us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the Father, and he is full of grace and truth absolutely full of grace and truth. Never did we hear Jesus getting agitated. I'm not saying that y'all have to live up to that. That's not what I'm saying. But he's just a perfect example. If we just find ourselves always uh, nagging on our spouse or picking on something, trying to get them to change something, maybe let's look at the word ourselves and figure out, okay, What's an example of Jesus coming to somebody full of grace and truth, right? Let's look at the example of Jesus. Y'all, we can't go wrong if we do that. At least let's do that. Let's be full of grace and truth when we're talking to our spouse. A lot of times that looks like, I'm sure you guys have heard before, trying to pull like the, the words out of your speech when you're in conflict, like you always, right, dot, 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 or you never, dot, dot, dot. Whew. Those are fighting words, y'all. Fighting words. Let's instead try to change that to, listen, in this situation, this is how you made me feel. I don't think it was your intention because we both love each other. But this is how I'm feeling, right? All right, the next one and the last one. You ready? A team spirit. Woo, team spirit. <laughs> team spirit is the fifth key to successful communication. And listen, I'm, this is not all encompassing. We could probably do a whole series on just communicating in marriage, right? A whole message on each one of these. But number five, a team spirit. Oh, remember, guys, this is so hard in the middle of an argument or disagreement. But
But remember, it's you and your spouse against the argument. It's not you versus your spouse, right? Let's make the argument, the conflict, the situation, the crisis, let's make that the enemy, okay? And not our spouse, not our spouse. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Oh, think about this in marriage. Come on. How many times, even if you've been married a year, have you fallen and your spouse picked you up, right? Maybe you've been in the hospital and your spouse was there at your bedside. Maybe you lost that job or it didn't turn out the way it was supposed to be and your spouse was there praying for you. Maybe you yelled at your kid for the 500th time that day and your spouse said, okay, let's take a break. I'll take it from here. That is pick, like how many times the Bible says? 77 times, seven. like just keep on. Don't tire in doing good. When one falls, the other picks them up. A pity if anyone falls who has no one to help them. If you are single, this is why church is so important. You can walk in, you can find a band of brothers and you can say, whoa, I messed up this week, y'all. I need prayer. I need prayer. I need help. Or celebrate with me. This amazing thing happened. That's why these small groups and coming to church is so important. We're supposed to be here for each other. Also, if we like, if two lie down together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And then it gets even better. Boom. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. You and your partner or your future partner and God, let that be a foundation. If I'm speaking to you and this is your future, you're not married yet, let's do it different this time, right? Let God be the foundation. If it's not the foundation, if he's not in your marriage right now, change it. It's not too late. It's never too late. He could be on your deathbed in the hospital. It's not too late. Invite God into it. He just wants to be a part of it. The Bible has some pretty strong words about how our marriages are supposed to reflect Christ. Woo, that's a big charge. But it's true because it's rare, y'all. I took for granted growing up with my parents together, loving each other, and working out their differences. Any of my friends that I had growing up who came over to my house, none of them had parents who were still together. That's wild. Your marriage is powerful. It's unique. It's special to just you and your spouse. It's worth it. It's worth the work and the learning and the communicating and all the fun things and the bad things and the good things. It's worth it all. It's worth it all. Don't ever let anybody tell you different. Don't ever let anybody tell you it'll be easier to walk away. It's not. It's really not. That's not God's design. That heartbreak, if you've been through it, man, you know. It's not God's design. So choose your spouse. Choose the person in the future. Say, it's going to be different this next time, right? The team spirit. In your spouse, praise the differences that they have, right? The things that annoy you. I just have to say, God designed them. Maybe it's something that you needed that you didn't have. Something you were missing. Uh Uh-huh. So maybe, maybe, maybe a team spirit is what we need to come together with. Celebrate your spouse's differences. Seek their input and make decisions together, right? The Bible calls us to be as one, making all those decisions together. Amen? Amen? All right, so go ahead and stand up. Yep. Just want to share something. You guys can go ahead and stand up. 
So all across the room, how many of you guys have heard of a reset? You know what a reset is? You know, like the reset button, the old school little red one that you would see at Home Depot and it, or that, that's the easy button, but the reset, there is a reset button too. And I just feel like God in this message is saying to some marriages in here and some people who are in a different season of life where, where maybe marriage didn't work out. I believe he's giving you a spiritual reset today. And I want to give you some scripture for that. So Revelation 21.5 says, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Some of you need a new reset today in your life. And Jesus is saying, I am making all things new. Maybe there's a fight that you just can't get over. Spiritual reset. Maybe there's a struggle that you just can't see past. Spiritual reset. Maybe there's something in your past that hurts you. Spiritual reset today. Joel 2.25, last one, it says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent among you. Jesus, all throughout scripture, even in the Old Testament, we see it, that he's about resetting what was old and making it new. Some of you, I just feel a heavy burden on you today in your marriage. Or maybe even from forgiving something that happened in your previous marriage. Or maybe there's a marriage on the horizon and there's some things that you need to forgive and forget to set it off on the right foot. So I just want to encourage you guys to do that today. There's no better time than right now. Hit the spiritual reset today. Amen, amen. If you would just join me in prayer. If you are here with your spouse and you are sitting close to them, go ahead and put your hand on their shoulder or hold hands. Dear Lord, we just thank you for every marriage and family represented in this place. Lord, we thank you for the future marriages that are to come. Lord, we thank you that as we put you first, you are moving in our lives. Lord, you are forgiving and healing wounds that need to be let go. Lord, you are opening doors where they need to be opened in these marriages. Opening a brand new way of communicating that we haven't tried before. Lord, we thank you for correct tones. We thank you for enough time. We thank you that we are able to speak to our spouses in grace and truth. Lord, we thank you that we come together as a team, as one, seeing our differences as our strengths, not our weaknesses. So, Lord, we invite you into our marriages today. Lord, let us be like that three-stranded cord, the one that is not easily broken. Thank you for honoring our marriages. Thank you for lifting them up to wholeness and completion. Amen, amen, amen. All right, woohoo! That's good. Before we close, we're going to do like we always do. And first, of course, is the opportunity to know Jesus. If you do not, we always end with that awesome opportunity. Maybe you heard about a God that we're supposed to put first and you realize you just never have in your life and you need to do that today. So if you could go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes, go ahead and lift your hands if you need to receive that Jesus today. If you're online, please send us a message and reach out to us. We're all going to pray together this prayer. Repeat after me, dear Jesus, I accept you into my heart. Thank you for loving me. Help me be more like you. Remove this sin from my life. I put you first. Amen. 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 Awesome. We're going to close. I'm just going to pray over, over tithe and offering. If you feel led to give, that would be an amazing way to worship the Lord. We believe that we worship him in many ways here at Story Church. And one of that 
ways is by putting him first in our finances. And so we hope for you that looks like giving to the local storehouse, the Bible says, or your local church. And so if you're plugged in here, we would ask that you pray about this, about giving. We're so excited about the things that are coming up in Story Church's schedule on the horizon. But unfortunately, literally all of that happens with finances. (laughs) As hard as that is, it's very, very true. (laughs) So let's just pray over that. If you are giving, go ahead and close your eyes. Lord, we thank you for this blessing. Lord, would you multiply it? Would you do something new? Would you move on hearts to bring them to Story Church? Would you move in every marriage represented here? Lord, that finances are not an issue, not something we fight about. Lord, that we steward our money well and that we honor you with it first. Let things fall into place. Let them do what they are supposed to do. Lord, we are not lovers of money here. We use money as a tool for your kingdom. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Give your spouse a big old squeeze, squeeze. (laughs) And have an awesome, awesome week.